Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sins, now and in the hour of our death. Absolve, O Lord, the souls of all the faithful departed from every bond of sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. When the Dominican Blessed Henry Suso was in Cologne studying in the university, he had made a very good friend for himself. It was another Dominican uh, that was there with him, and they found a mutual uh, friendship based truly in piety. Both of them were very serious about growing in perfection, striving to perform devotions, attending to the, to the duties of the liturgy and, and all of these things. And so they found this regular occurrence of interacting with each other around the church and their discussions being ones which were extraordinarily biased and engaging in things of God and eternity. And so they formed a close friendship all throughout their time in university. When it came finally to the end, and both of them were finishing up their studies, they realized that Providence would have it, that they weren't going to be located in the same area of the world to work near each other, but rather would go separate ways and perhaps never even cross paths again. But being good holy men, they knew that the bond that they had together was more importantly spiritual than it was one of proximity. And so they agreed to make a pact with each other. The pact being that the first one to die, the other priest would promise to offer two requiem masses and one mass of the passion for the repose of the soul of the other each month, so much as the rubrics would permit them to do so. And with that, the two friends shook hands and went their separate ways. Many years would go by, both of them serving our Lord very well, very diligently, making efforts to save souls for their, in their vocation. Until after a number of years, Henry one day received word that his dear friend had died. Blessed Henry felt the pain of loss, but he also trusted in providence and knew that the, all he could do from there was to pray for his friend. And every day he began to offer these multitude of prayers. And every day he would find some sort of sacrifice and penance to impose upon himself for the, for the repose of his friend's soul. However, as sometimes would happen, so much time had gone by that just a frailty of mind, he had forgotten all about the pact of masses that they had made to each other. One morning, Henry had woken and was in spending the morning time meditating. He was there in uh, contemplating, and as he was in his morning meditation, all of a sudden before him appeared the soul of his departed friend. He came to him, not with a smile upon his face, but not with anger either. He simply looked upon him and with a gentleness reproached blessed Henry Suso. He told him, why is it that you have forgotten to live up to your promise? I am here in purgatory awaiting for you to do what I am owed in justice due to our agreement. 
was that Henry was really surprised by this apparition that he has before him and startled by it and shocked that his friend was still there languishing in purgatory. He asked him, is it not possible that so many prayers and so many mortifications that I have done up to this point have not sufficed to liberate you from purgatory? His friend said, no, dear brother, it is the blood of Christ which is needed to extinguish the flames which consume me. It is the august sacrifice which is needed to release me from my torments. Please, I implore you, keep your promise to me. With that, his friend left him. Blessed Henry Suso hastened immediately to the church and right away he set forth to offer mass for his friend not just the things which were promised but knowing that he had let, had not fulfilled his duty up to this point he made it a purpose to offer even more on his friend's behalf he got several other priests to join him telling him of all that he had witnessed and, and what was needed to liberate their fellow brother priest. Several of them would offer masses for his soul each and every day, along with Blessed Henry. And after several days had gone by where these priests were offering daily masses for him, Henry again found himself there quietly in morning meditation. But now, his friend returned to him and was, to his delight, a different appearance. Gone was any kind of insinuation of struggle. But now, his face radiated with great joy and he was surrounded by a wonderful, bright light. And he spoke to Henry. He said, Behold, by the blood of the Savior, I am delivered from my sufferings. I am now going to heaven to contemplate him whom we have adored so often under the Eucharistic veil. Henry rejoiced at the wonderful treasure his friend had finally obtained. Our prayers and our sacrifices that we make for the holy souls in purgatory, they are very good. They're very important. This is not to take away from that or to distract us from doing these things. Every little bit alleviates the holy souls. Every little bit can gain liberty for the souls in purgatory. But it is rather to stress the importance of the greatest offering we can make for these souls, which is to offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass. It is the perfect sacrifice. It is the complete sacrifice. It is the very act, the crucifixion upon Calvary, which is what freed men from sin and gave them hope of redemption. That same act upon Calvary, the great act of mercy, now is applied to free souls from the effects of sin, the stains of sin, so that they may quickly go to an eternal reward. The graces of the Mass, the infinite sacrifice God, these things we cannot even contemplate or measure in this life. And so it is for us to remember the faithful departed in our masses. We have placed our offering, our, our, uh, our intentions upon the altar for these three masses, those who we wish to remember. But we also have other times we attend mass that we keep these people in our mementos. We have the opportunity to have masses said for the holy souls. 
And I must say, those of you here at St. Hugh, we do a good job of remembering these poor souls. There are many times that as I go through the Mass intentions, that that is the intention for faithful departed or for them, for souls in purgatory in general. And so this is not a correction, but merely a reminder to continue doing these very good works, which you do. Do not allow that fervor for those of the faithful departed to wane. Just because human nature operates in that way. We do not see them around us, so it is easy for us to forget. As time distances us from those whom we have cared and loved for, who have passed away, then the, the difficulty of remembering them becomes greater and greater. That the, the intention to pray for those who have gone before us can fade if we are not careful. And so, continue in these efforts, offering masses for your loved ones, offering masses for your friends, offering masses for clergy who have offered so many masses for you. And to remember as well the forgotten souls, so many who have no one to pray for them, no one to intercede on their behalf, to extend charity towards them, to quench the flames which purify them. Each of us can do our part in creating a great army of saints, saints who are grateful for all that we have made an effort to offer for them and who in turn are eager to intercede on our behalf before the throne of God so that one day we may join them in that heavenly paradise. We are the mystical body of Christ. We are all united in this one singular effort of seeing God face to face. And so let us continue to offer our sacrifices and the sacrifice of our Lord upon the altar for these holy souls in purgatory. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.